Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 23 of 2022 on establishing the Military Institution for Military Industrialization in Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF. Article 2 stipulates that the Military Institution for Military Industrialization aims to establish and organize military manufacturing activities in the BDF, including designing, developing and modifying defense and security systems using modern technology. Article 3 stipulates that the institution may establish factories for weapons, ammunition and military equipment, manufacture and trade in modern technologies, as well as license any related economic activities within the Kingdom. Article 4 stipulates that the institution has the right to develop the military industry sector through its own projects, whether under its direct management and supervision or in partnership with various companies, inside or outside Bahrain, in a manner that serves its objectives and roles. Article 5 stipulates that the institution will have a special budget to be included in the budget of the BDF. Article 6 stipulates that the Commander-in-Chief issues the regulations and decisions necessary to organise the institution and achieve the purpose for which it was established, including its tasks and duties, appointing military and civilian employees and issuing administrative and financial regulations. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, received at his office the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazea Zainal where he highlighted the importance of continuing the democratic march in Bahrain and of developing it in accordance with the aspirations of the leadership and its people. They reviewed the new National Council building project and the preparations for commencing the new legislative term. The secretariats of the Shura and Representatives Councils were directed on that regard. The Chairman of the Shura Council and the Speaker of the Representatives Council affirmed that the achievements of the Legislative Authority during the fifth legislative term is a result of the unlimited support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the cooperation and follow-up of the government led by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. They hailed the efforts of the two Council's members and their sincere endeavours to serve the country and its citizens. During the meeting, the organisational affairs and the formation of committees to host the 146th International Parliamentary Union meeting in March of next year were discussed. The Chairman and Speaker emphasised the necessity for continuing cooperation between the two councils to achieve common goals. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, received the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The chairman praised has been achieved in the terms of implementing the priorities and initiatives of the economic recovery plan in a way that supports the comprehensive development process under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He valued the role played by the minister in following up on the priorities and programmes included in the economic recovery plan and the financial balance plan. He noted the progress achieved by the kingdom in the field of performance governance, enhancing investment opportunities and reviving the financial and business market. Asala pointed out that the financial and economic reports and indicators show the government's success in benefiting from the legislative system related to financial and economic affairs. Under the patronage of the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Azid Al Ziani, Dara Balad Company for Journalism, Publishing and Distribution launched the Al Balad list of the top 50 Bahraini companies for the year 2022 in the presence of the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Al-Balad newspaper, Abdul Nabi al shula representatives of major Bahraini companies, members of the Chamber and elite businessmen and economists. The project of the list aims to highlight the leading role of the national institutions in supporting economic growth, as well as highlighting the most prominent economic sectors contributing to the GDP by monitoring the financial statements in accordance with the best accounting practices and economic standards. The Information and E-Government Authority and technology company Microsoft organised a workshop on the latest innovations with the participation of the Chief Information Officers and Managers representing various government agencies in Bahrain. The workshop is in line with the recent renewal of the strategic partnership between the Government of Bahrain, represented by the Information and E-Government Authority and Microsoft, to support national efforts and accelerate the pace of digital transformation in the Kingdom. IGA Chief Executive Mohamed Al-Khaid 
affirm the unlimited support provided by the leadership of Bahrain for the employment and adoption of modern and advanced technologies in the government sector and the importance of utilising them in the development of strong information society. He hailed the national achievements in this regard and noted the existing cooperation between Bahrain and leading organisations in the information and communication technology field, including Microsoft. He also noted that the renewal of the strategic partnership with the company would contribute to facilitating the country's transition to a digital era and would enhance joint and tireless efforts to maintain the continuity of providing services with the same efficiency and quality while improving economic growth and the lives of citizens and residents in Bahrain. Arkay noted that Bahrain is a pioneer in the digital transformation in the Middle East and North Africa region and that the Kingdom is always an early adopter of advanced technology and cloud computing services. We are very happy to announce that the Kingdom of Bahrain's government is the first country within the Middle East and uh, Africa to transfer its government to fully to the cloud. Okay, and this renewal of the uh, agreement actually is very important for us to enhance our uh, cloud uh, uh, utilization. Uh, we have over 22,000 employees that really benefited for the past few years from the transfer to the cloud. Uh, this helped us within the pandemic period. Um, the, uh, there were, uh, we, we overcame the uh, time and uh, place uh, obstacles. Uh, which really made us work easily, even though the other countries and this faced a lot of shutdowns. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the government did not really go to a shutdown. The CEO of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority and Chairman of the National Committee to Combat Trafficking in Persons, Jamal al participated in the 12th meeting of the Working Group on Trafficking in Persons in Vienna. The participation comes as consolidation of the prestigious international position of the Kingdom in the field of combating trafficking in persons and in the spirit of strengthening international partnership. al stressed that Bahrain is committed to supporting all efforts and initiatives to combat trafficking in persons and preserve human rights in general, deriving from the approach of His Majesty the King and with the support of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He stressed the Kingdom's keenness on the continuous development of the national system and legislation to combat trafficking in persons by keeping pace with global events and conditions affecting the system to combat trafficking in persons. Following what was circulated about the possibility of a rise in meat and poultry prices, the Assistant Undersecretary for Control and Resources at the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, Abdulaziz Al Ashraf, confirmed that the Inspection Department continuously monitors the prices of basic commodities and checks their availability at their usual prices, noting the market movement in general. He emphasised that with Eid al Adha approaching, there is an intensification of the control campaigns that would address early in any cases of price hikes. The monitoring movement showed that there is a diversity in food sources which gives the market a degree of stability in offering products in abundant quantities. As for the increase in prices, it is due to the high cost of shipping, changing seasons or scarcity of goods from the country of origin. al stressed that in the event of any violations being detected, consumers should contact the Ministry or place their complaints through Tawasol. The Kingdom of Bahrain has authorised the use of the drug Paxofil as part of the treatment protocols for existing cases to reduce symptoms associated with the virus. The Kingdom is considered one of the first countries that authorised its use, as the concerned authorities are constantly working to provide treatments and follow up on renewable protocols to preserve the health and safety of citizens and residents. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues to keep pace with global developments in the field of medical treatments in accordance with the latest scientific studies to provide useful treatments after an adequate and thorough review of the various studies to ensure that the health status of the citizen and resident is the top priority. The Kingdom of Bahrain has provided several options of medicine to address the coronavirus as well as all diagnostic and therapeutic capabilities to deal with it perfectly. The Medical Hajj mission of the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen to provide the best services to pilgrims and to provide the best health and treatment services to the pilgrims of the Kingdom of Bahrain. 
The head of the Bahrain mission, Sheikh Abnan al Qatan, confirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is closely following the health of the pilgrims before their departure and stresses the need for them to obtain the necessary health care and vaccinations required for the Hajj season. The Health Assembly in Mecca has completed all its preparations to provide health services for the Hajj season this year in 10 hospitals and more than 25 health centres, where the Health Assembly announced its readiness to complete the operational plans for all its hospitals and health centres to provide integrated medical services at the highest level in accordance with the organisational plans, supervised by the Ministry of Health, to implement the plans prepared for the Hajj season.